Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on the time you are watching. This video belongs to a series with an aim to educate the masses on the very basics of sustainability and its related topics, including their actions and impacts. No prior knowledge of any subject is required. Let us explore today's topic. You might have heard about CSR and ESG reports being released by big companies and corporations. What are these reports? What is the difference between the two? And why companies choose to report them? We will discover today. CSR stands for Corporate Social Responsibility. The term was coined by an American economist, Howard Bobbin, and considered as father of social responsibility. In 1971, social contract concept between businesses and society was established with an idea that companies exist because of public consent and there is an obligation to contribute to societal needs. In the 1990s, there was widespread approval of CSR. Companies used self-driven CSR initiatives as a tool to stand out in the strong and competitive market. The initiatives were more focused towards philanthropic and charity activities or some actions taken to make more transparent decisions regarding legal and ethical responsibilities. The initiatives depended upon the type of industry and its activities, like a manufacturing company would focus more on fair treatment of employees or environmental impacts of its products. Uh, on the other hand, a consulting firm may consider community engagement or working with nonprofit organizations to achieve its social and environmental goals. The point to note here is that it is a self-regulatory and voluntary action, qualitative in nature, not bound to any standards, and there is no penalty for not achieving any defined goals or objectives, if they were defined at the first place. There was a constant debate whether these actions are an additional economic burden on the business or if the brand reputation and consumer loyalty bring enough additional revenue. At the beginning of this millennium, companies started integrating CSR into the company's business model, brand values, and priorities. Since all CSR activities are voluntary, without any check and balance or obligations, companies were accused of using CSR as a PR tool and false reporting. In the past 2010 world, where customers, investors, and other stakeholders became more aware of global challenges, seeking more information about the services or product they use and their impact on the environment and society, a new global framework was required to compare the claims and performance of corporations against an agreed and established criterion. This new framework is called ESG, Environmental, Social, and Governance. In continuation to the CSR, ESG measures the performance of a corporation on three pillars, environmental impact, social impact, and governance impact. Environmental aspects may include carbon emissions, air, water, and ground pollution, resources used by a company, like as if a company uses virgin or recycled materials, land use concerns like deforestation or biodiversity, etc. Social aspects may include how a company manages its workforce development, safety, labor practices, including its downstream supply chain. Governance may include how the executives are compensated, how diverse the board members are, and how a company deals with corruption and whistleblowers. These ESG indicators are valuable tools for investors who want to assess a company's long-term prospects beyond just financial performance. They are meant to provide a comprehensive view of a company's impact on the environment, society, and its ability to govern itself ethically. Not all sectors of the economy face the same ESG issues. GHG emissions may not haunt a bank as much compared to a manufacturing or a production conglomerate. There are multiple frameworks against which a company can choose to report their ESG measures, like SASB, Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, TCFD, Task Force on Climate and Financial Disclosure, CDP, Carbon Disclosure Project, and many more. These non-financial reports can be generated as per the standards like GRI, Global Reporting Initiative, ISSB, International Sustainability Standards Board, etc. And these disclosures can be cross-checked or verified by a third party. 
Some frameworks are suitable for certain types of organizations based on their operational activity, like CDP is more focused towards the environmental part of ESG. All these disclosures are still voluntary, however, different countries are making the ESG disclosures mandatory and the trend is expected to be followed by the rest of the world. To sum it up, these are the key differences between CSR and ESG. ESG is quantitative with more measurable and auditable numbers against some established criteria. CSR is more qualitative and self-driven in nature. ESG data is extremely regulated against the chosen framework. CSR is self-regulated. ESG is directly related to business valuation. CSR is less likely to be used as valuation and more like a PR and marketing tool. ESG is implemented through measurable goals, targets, and audits. CSR is implemented through corporate culture, values, and brand management. I hope the CSR and ESG basics are well understood and I will upload another video soon to explain different ESG reporting standards and how they are linked to sustainable development goals. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching up to this point. If you want me to discuss any other topic related to this subject, please mention it in the comment and I will try my best to come up with a short video covering the basics. Have a good day.